please introduce yourself to the jury. Richard Hanley. Where do you live at, Richard? Everdeen. Did you know Jessica Goldberg? Yes. How did you know her? We were friends and started dating for a little bit. Do you remember around what year you first met? Probably. I met her about 2013, 14, somewhere in there. Did you start spending more time with Jessica in December of 2014? Yes. About when was that? About the 4th or 5th of December. What types of things would you and Jessica do together? Hang out. Um, just chill at her house, pretty much. Did you see Jessica on January 6, 2015? Yes. How did that come about? My mom dropped me off there about right before the sun went down, quarter to six or something like that. Went to. I'm just gonna stop you. When you said your mom dropped you off there, where are you talking about? At her house. That's Jessica's house. Yes. Whatever. Um. We went to McDonald's first, bought chicken nuggets and french fries for a kid, and then I got dropped out there. So you're, you're now at Jessica's house? Yep. What were you wearing when you went to Jessica's house that night? White sweater, white tee, blue jeans, and black and green shoes. When you say sweater, can you describe what that looked like, please? It was a white, white, all white, and a little bit of blue, and one sweater. Did it have a hood on it? Yes. What did you and Jessica do when you got to her house that night? I gave her kids the chicken nuggets and french fries, and she asked me if I wanted to go upstairs to the bedroom. So I said, yeah. So we did, and we had sex, and John started pounding on the door. How did you know it was John pounding on the door? I didn't at the time. Neither did she. She thought it was the cops. Why did she think it was the cops? Because she said she never paid on her stuff for the month. And she thought they might have issued a warrant. And the pounding never stopped for 10 or 15 minutes ringing the doorbell over and over, ding, 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 boom, boom, boom. So then what happened? <clears throat> she asked me to hold the baby while she went to go answer the door because if it's the cops, they ain't gonna go away, she said. So we both agreed that she go answer the door. I said, if it is the cops, I have a warrant and just answer the door real quick, go step outside with them. If they want to take you to jail, just go and I'll go get your sister and we'll come bond you up. But it didn't happen like that. She, right when she got down to the bottom of the stairs, I was there was a big boom and it sounded like she hit the floor. And I heard her saying, get the, get the app out of here. Um, do you, hear, do you hear a male's voice at that point? Yeah. What's the male's voice saying, Richard? It was John saying, where the F is he at? Where the F is he at? And what happened? I'm upstairs holding the baby. There's only one way out of the house is back down the steps. I'm upstairs on the second level and I heard his footsteps coming up the stairs. And I'm up there holding the baby, and he comes around the corner and he says, What's up, mother? I said, Not here, man, not for the kids. And he said, I don't give a f. I don't give a f. What happened next, Richard? I tried to set the baby out of the way, and he starts hitting me as I'm setting the kid down. And then we started fighting. Where did you get hit at? 
in the head over and over. Every time I try to stand up, it set me back down into a sitting position on the bed. About what time did that take place? You said you got to the house around a quarter to six. Probably about six o'clock. Do you have any injuries at this point? He cut my eye right here. You pointed to your right eye? Yes. Were you bleeding? Yes. Any other injuries? No. How did you... Oh right, yeah, he bit my arm too. Pointing to your left arm? Yep. How did that come about, the biting of your left arm? Because I tried to um, put him in a chokehold and he wiggled around and bit my arm and gouged my eye. What happened next? Um, Jessica was on the phone with 911 at that time, I, I believe. Did you hear her? Yes. What did you do? I was trying to get away, trying to get away from John at the time. Did you end up getting away? Yeah. Where did you go when you got away? I ran home. So you left Jessica's house? Yep. What were you wearing when you left Jessica's house? Just my t-shirt, pants, and socks. I didn't have time to put on my sweater or shoes or anything. So you left your sweater and shoes behind? Yeah. At Jessica's? Yeah. Did you leave anything else behind? My cell phone. Do you know where your cell phone was? It was in my sweater pocket. Rich, I'm showing you what's been marked as exhibit number 56. Can you please identify <clears throat> Those are the pants I had on and the socks. The pants you had on when you ran from Jessica's? Yep. And the socks you had on when you ran from Jessica's? Yep. Is that a true and accurate depiction of those pants and socks? Yeah. You're not offering any 56 in your hands? Any objection? Ten papers. No objection to that. Exhibit 56 is received. Permission to publish, Your Honor. Any objection? No, Your Honor. You may publish. <coughs> Rich, I'll just have you point to the jeans and socks that you're referring to when you said you ran out of Jessica's house wearing those. Those are my jeans and those are my socks. You said you were wearing a, a white t shirt. White t -shirt. Yep. I'm showing you what's been marked as exhibit number 51. Can you please identify that for me? That's the t shirt I had on. How do you know that's the t shirt you had on? Because I took it off at the hospital and that's my blood on my shirt. The t shirt you took off at the hospital, did it, it look like that with the blood on it you took it off? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of the t-shirt you took off at the hospital? Yes. Your Honor, I would offer it as a bit more 51 in evidence. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Exhibit 51 is received. Permission to publish your evidence. Any objection? No, Your Honor. You may publish the exhibit. <clears throat> blood we see on the t-shirt, the red substance we see on the t-shirt in exhibit 51. Can you tell me what that is, please? That's the blood from my eye. Did you leave your, you already told us you left your sweatshirt and shoes at the house, too. Yeah. Do you remember where you left those at? In her room. In Jessica's room? Yeah. What level of the house is that on? Second. Exhibit number 96. Can you please identify that for me? That's my and one sweater that I had on. When you left the house, did your and one sweater you have on have any red substance on it? No. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of your and one sweatshirt? Yes. All right, offered 96 in evidence. Any objection? No, Your Honor. 
Exhibit 96 is received. Any objection? No, Your Honor. You may publish the exhibit. I'm going to have you point out your hand one selection. Show me what's been marked as exhibit number 98. Do you have one of my last one, Those are my shoes. That's a picture of your two shoes? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of your shoes? Yes. Does anyone offer exhibit number 98 into evidence? Any objection? No, Your Honor. Exhibit 98 is received. Permission to publish. Any objection? No, Your Honor. You may publish the exhibit. Those are the shoes you just identified, Rich? Yes. How do you know those are your shoes? Because I just got those shoes and I know they're mine. Those are the ones that you left at the house when you were there? Yes. Rich, going back to that fight at Jessica's house, do you see the person that punched you in the face sitting in the corner today? Yes. Can you please identify him by what he's wearing and where he's sitting? Sitting right there, John. What color shirt does he have? Blue. The owner made the record reflect that Mr. Haney identified the defendant, John. The record will reflect the identification. So from Jessica's house when you run, where do you go, Rich? I ran straight back to my mom's. Just about how far is that block <clears throat> It's about four blocks. And this is when you don't have any shoes on? Yes. What do you do when you get to your mom's? I noticed that her car wasn't on, and my auntie, Josie, it's my mother's sister, she lives right downstairs on the main floor apartment, so I just ran in there, knocked on the door and just opened, opened it up, let myself in, and I said, auntie, could you help me? And she said, oh my god, what happened? Rich, did you end up getting a hold of your mom? She, I told my auntie to call my mom right away. So she did. Did your mom show up at the apartment? Yes. What did you and your mom do next? I had her take me over to my cousin Cheryl's house, but she wasn't home, so we didn't go there. We got halfway there. Got a hold of Cheryl on the phone. Said she wasn't home, she's working late, house is locked, go to Nikki's. Who's, that, Nick? Who's Nikki? That's my other cousin. Where does Nikki, where does Nikki live at? She lives at Dakota Squares. Is that apartments in Aberdeen? Yeah, it's an apartment complex in, on North Dakota Street. How did you and your mom get to Dakota Square Apartments? In her um, Dodge Stratus, the silver Dodge Stratus. That's how we got there. Rich, approximately, what time did you get to Dakota Square? You told the jury 5.45 you got to just that the fight is right around 6. What time did you get to Dakota Square? It was about 6.30. Rich, I'm showing you what's been marked as exhibit number 52. Can you please identify that for me? That's me getting out of my mom's car. And where are you at? It's a white t-shirt. Getting out of the silver Stratus. And can you describe where that parking lot is at that you're getting out of the car? It is on right off of Dakota Street. And those are the Dakota Square apartments you told us about earlier? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate description of you getting out of the vehicle? Yeah. Dakota Square apartments? Yep. Any objection? No objection. Exhibit 52 is received. Permission to publish? Any objection? No, Your Honor. You may publish the exhibit. It's kind of hard to see on the screen, Rich, but could you point out where your mom's car is at and where you were at on that picture, please? That's me 
I'm getting out of the car right there. I'm now showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 52A. Can you please tell me what that is? Me and my mom getting back into the car. Are you still at the Coda Square Apartments? Yes. How, how long were you at the Coda Square Apartments? Not long. I just went inside to wash all the blood out from my face and to get an ice pack for my eye. And then we left after that? And then we left. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of you and your mom leaving the Coda Square Apartments and getting in the car? Yes. Any objection? No objection. Exhibit 52A is received. Permission to publish. Any objection? No, Your Honor. We may publish the exhibit. Which is, again, it's kind of hard to see, but I had to point out where you are and where your mom's at and your car's at. That's my mom. That's me. That's the car. And what are you guys doing? Getting ready to leave. Getting into the car to leave. Where do you go when you leave, Rich? Straight to the 48th Hospital in North Dakota. Did you make any stops at all on the way there? We stopped at the truck stop in Selby to get something to drink and some cigarettes and a different t-shirt. You said you went to the 48th Hospital. Why did you go there? For my eye because it wouldn't stop bleeding. Is there a particular reason you picked 48th Hospital? Because I... I don't have no insurance, and Indians get free health care. The IHS, I didn't want to get stuck with the big, big bill if I went to the emergency room in Aberdeen. So that's the reason why I wanted to go to 48th Hospital. Do you have any family in 48th, Rich? Yes. You have family in the surrounding 48th area, too? Yes. Have you driven from Aberdeen to 48th before? Yes. Approximately how long does it take? About three hours. What time approximately do you check into the hospital? It's about 10 o'clock. And how long roughly are you there for? Until like 11.30. And then you check out of the hospital around that time? Yeah. Where do you go from there? Straight to the Prairie Nights Casino. And where's that located, Rich? About 20 miles north of Fort Yates. So is that 20 miles further from Aberdeen than Fort Yates? Yes. What do you do when you get to the casino hotel? We get a room for the night. Go in and go to sleep. Can you say we? You're talking about who? My mother. Checks into the hospital. I'm sorry. He checks into the casino hotel. My mother. I'm showing you what's been marked. This is exhibit number 53. Can you please identify that for me? That's me and my mom. What are you doing there? I'm holding my eye with the ice pack, and my mom's opening the hotel room door.
show you what's been marked as exhibit number 53A. Can you please identify that for me? That's me. My mom lived in the hotel room. You said you woke up at about 5 o'clock. What time did you leave approximately? It's about 5.30. So you left for Aberdeen at about 5.30? No. Where did you go? I went to my dad's. And my mom dropped me off at my dad's. And then about 20 more miles northwest of Aberdeen. I'm northwest of the Prairie Nights Casino. Yep. This is not a true and accurate depiction of you leaving the hotel room in exhibit 53A? Yes. I uh, offer exhibit 53A in evidence. Any objection? No, Your Honor. 53A is received. Motion to publish. Any objection? No, Your Honor. You may publish the exhibit. Rich, what are you holding up to your face there? The ice pack. Why are you holding that up there? Because my the stitches in my eye and the doctors told me to keep ice pack on it. I don't have anything further to say. Mr. Cobb, any questions? I wasn't at Jessica's when the cops arrived. You, well, you talked about a fight that you had with uh, John, right? Correct. And that there was pounding on the door? Yeah. And you're right. That wasn't law enforcement according to your story. That was John Hermitier? Yep. Yeah. You mentioned that you had a warrant and you were concerned about the warrant? Yes. And what was your warrant for? Absconding. What were you absconding from? My DUI third. Where was that out of? Aberdeen. Were you eventually arrested for absconding? Yep. And <clears throat> were you on probation then? I was on probation for the absconding, yeah. Were you on probation for the DUI? Yep. And when you were arrested for absconding, what happened with that? I was held in jail and I asked my lawyer if I could, if I would be a good candidate to be on DUI court. And ultimately you were allowed into the DUI court? Yes. And your probation was not revoked at that time? No, it was, they put me on DUI court. Right, your probation was not revoked. You did, though, eventually end up in the penitentiary, you know? Yes. And what for us? Do you want to Exhibit 98, those are the shoes that you claim you were wearing at Jessica's house? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes or a no? Yes. When you went into the house, did you take your shoes off immediately? I took them off, I took everything off upstairs. You took the shoes off upstairs as well? 
Do you recognize the location of those shoes on the house? It looks like the bathroom downstairs. You didn't place them in the bathroom last No. Rich, was it Detective Gross who told you about your white hooded sweatshirt having blood on it? Yeah. Thank you. 